everyone, it's Helen here from Bodywork Pilates and this is the first in a new series of videos that I'm going to be bringing for you called Can't Do This, Try This. And this came from the suggestion of a client of mine and when I asked what my clients would find useful that they could perhaps practice at home, that um, would help them in their practice, she suggested this, that if somebody came to a movement that they couldn't do fully, that perhaps I could give alternatives. So it means that when they come to a class, they're already knowledgeable about the alternatives that may be appropriate to them. And that might help them to A, progress towards the, the fuller movement, or just gives them an option that they can be prepared for. So the first thing we're going to look at is a movement called roll up. Now this is probably the one movement that I see most people struggle with. So if I did a straw poll, this would be the one where most people said, oh, I really struggle with that. And it is the from seated to lying to back up to seated again, the roll up. And it's a tough movement. It requires strength and mobility and flexibility and good control. And if you have any tension, tightness, immobility in the lumbar spine, you will struggle with this. So for somebody who's perhaps had um, some surgery on the lower spine and has a lot of scar tissue, um, they would find that difficult. Somebody with poor posture and perhaps um, just weak in that area, they might find this difficult. This isn't going to work for somebody who has had um, any sort of fusing in the lumbar spine because with the best will in the world, we're not going to get those lumbar vertebra moving again and nor do we want to so again we've got to be appropriate but I'm doing this on the understanding that if you are otherwise fit and well and healthy and you haven't any structural issues that you're aware of in that area then the potential is there that it could perhaps be improved but as I say it's probably the one movement that I see most people struggle with and that people get most frustrated with as well. So we're gonna have a look at the movement and then we're gonna look at a couple of options that you might be able to use at home in your own practice or even in the studio when you're in class. So we need to lay down. So we'll start from lying because that's where we start classically. Now, of course, what we need to do is find whatever your neutral position is today. And, you know, again, classically, if we were going to do this classically, we would be working with the legs straight. So the ability to open up through the front of the hips, to maintain that openness through the front of the pelvis and the natural curve, rather than an unforced curve in the lumbar spine, is important. Okay? If you can't lie like this, then you immediately have to modify, perhaps, to a bent leg. And it doesn't matter whether the feet are flat or whether just the heels touch, that doesn't matter, but it is really important whether the legs are straight or bent, that you are able to maintain contact with the floor. So what we don't want to do is have our feet flipping up and off the floor at any point. So let's just have a look and see what the movement should look like. So I'm lying in my neutral position, my ribs are softened, my breath is into the fullness of my ribs and my upper back. And the back of my neck is long, my arms are resting at length at the side of the body. I've got my legs straight and my heels are down. So again, I don't want to hyperextend to lift my heels. My heels contact the ground. And I don't feel that I'm being pulled out of a position that I would perhaps be in if I was standing in good posture. So this is essentially what I would look like when I was standing. Okay, so I'm going to breathe in to lift my arms up. I'm going to lead with my thumbs and keep my shoulders drawn wide and down and take my arms back. Now I'm only going to take my arms back in line with the corner of my eye. I don't need to go any further. I'm going to bring my arms up. I'm going to let my arms come through. I'm going to start to curl through. I'm not pulling with my head. I'm just dropping my chin softly in and rolling over my shoulders. And I want to feel my ribs and my breastbone move down. And like somebody was pulling on my fingertips, I'm just going to curl over my shoulders away and I would perhaps reach forward and then I'm going to take it back to a stacked position. 
not completely classical, little modification, but I just like to bring people back to an upright, tall position before we roll down again. Just so people can get that feeling of the difference between rounding and neutral, upright, lifted position. Okay, so that would be the roll up. So we're looking to roll up one vertebra at a time, like we were just peeling our spine vertebra by vertebra. Think of your spine as being um, a bicycle chain and each link of that chain goes down in sequence, independent of the link above and the link below it. Okay. So from here, I still want my heels to contact the floor. My shoulders are wide and drawn down. My chin is still slightly drawn in. So one of the things I see is people pressing their heads forward. So do keep the chin drawing back, the arms are forward, and I'm just going to draw away from the lumbar spine. So I'm not collapsing, okay? It's almost as if somebody's got hold of the back of my pants and is pulling backwards, and I'm moving back from the space above my pubic bone and below my navel. So I'm just going to move back. I'm going to keep just softening my chin slightly in and down. I'm going to try and reach my legs as long as possible, but my legs do travel a little. Okay, so I'm going to just now keep curling and try to place every vertebra again in sequence down into my mat. And then I end up back where I started from. I haven't had to make too much adjustments with my head because I didn't move it too much in the first place. My shoulders are still wide and drawn down and I'm ready to repeat the movement. Okay, so what I see is this. I see people covering the same ground and they're pulling with their head and oh, it's all getting, but they're just going through the same ground all the time. Or I see this kind of thing happen. Um, what else? Ooh, of course, the leg grab. Of course, let's not forget the leg, leg grab. Um, and of course, through all of that, people don't keep a smooth breath. I mean, try it yourself, but you won't keep a smooth breath. You'll be pulling at the breath as much as you're pulling at everything else. So, the best thing to do if you struggle is to really start with the roll down. Is your roll down smooth for a start? So if, and again with legs straight or bent and you'll make that decision yourself, if when you roll back you get to a point and then because of an immobility in your spine you lose control and fall, then no amount of yanking is going to roll you back up smoothly, okay? So you need to be able to roll away, controlling all the time, reaching those legs forward, drawing away through the low back, keeping the shoulders relaxed, keeping the head relaxed, and imprinting every vertebra. Until you can roll down smoothly, you'll never roll up smoothly. So you might as well save your energy. So if you can't roll down smoothly, you're gonna really work on that. And then to come back up again, you'll roll over to the side, press through your hands, come all the way up, reset yourself and start again, okay? It might mean that you're a heartbeat behind somebody else in the class, but does that really matter? I don't think so. So again, the idea is that we keep it very smooth. Now, most people assume that they can't roll down because they're not strong enough. But again, I have this conversation regularly, it's generally not about the strength at the front of the body, it's normally about the immobility at the back of the body. So that's where you need to work on. So things like really working into the depth of your shoulder bridge, working on loosening off any tightness around the back of the pelvis, working on lateral movements and rotations, all of those things can really help. But again, if you can't roll down smoothly, then I would park the roll up for the moment. Just keep working on that. Now, assuming that you can roll down smoothly, but you can't roll up, what can you do? Well, again, we've already established that this really isn't the thing to do, all of that kind of thing. But using a couple of props might help. And what I've got here, well, I've got three props here. I've got a resistance band, I've got a towel, and I've got a set of weights. Now, I have to be honest, I do know instructors who put small towels into the arch of the lower back so essentially bringing the floor up towards the arch of the back 
it's not my preference. I don't like it because I don't think, and this is a personal opinion, don't shoot me, I don't think that it encourages tightness to release when you bring that up. Because as soon as your body hits that, it thinks it's done what it needs to do, there's no reason to progress any further, is there? So I'm not a big fan of the towel in the small of the back. I'm a huge fan of weights, and I'm equally a big fan of the band. So let's start with the band first. Now this could be useful for those of you that are struggling to roll down as well. And again, at this point, let me just stress that this is really for people who don't have any lower back issues. So if rolling down or rolling or forward flexion for any reason is not for you, then, you know, this might not be the video for you. But assuming that you can and you can improve what you're already doing, the band around the bottom of the feet, I like to go what I call a little bit of toe overlap. So I spread my band out, put a little bit of overlap over the top of the toes, and then really press out through the top sort of third of the band. And I would also slightly dip my feet forward too. Not massively, but just enough so that I'm less inclined to get the band come up and off. And you'll do that with straight or, or bent legs. Now, from sitting, you want to have some tension in the band already. Just a bit, a bit of tension in the band already, and then use the band to really, really control your movement. So from here, as I press my feet into the band, I keep my arms nice and long, and I'm just looking to control my roll down. Of course, I've got my breath nice and smooth, and I'm using a goodly amount of my abdominal pelvic floor control. Now I've rolled all the way down, okay, my band is now quite tight. What I don't want to do is try and pull on the band. I want the resistance that's been created to take me through the sticky bits. So, obviously I'm not gonna take my arms back, but I am gonna let the arms be drawn forward. My chin's gonna soften in as I roll over my shoulders, and I'm gonna curl to come all the way through and all the way back up again. I might choose to go forward and then come up, but I want to come back up to the upright. So what I've got is I've got this tension that just gently controls me forward again when I get to that sticky bit. So this would work very nicely for you if you are able to comfortably roll down, but perhaps aren't yet able to roll back up again. Okay. If you can't roll down, then you might find that using the band to just go to the point where perhaps you would otherwise lose control would work. So for example, you could pull away, pull away, pull away, pull away, pull away, pull away, and when you get to the point where ordinarily your feet would bob up and you would drop down like a square wheel, then you could stop there, keep those shoulders down, make sure those neck, the chin is drawn slightly in and the neck is relaxed, really pull away again from that space above the pubic bone and below the navel. So really pull away through that. Can you find any more movement there? And then perhaps come forward again, keeping that round and then restacking at the end of your movement. So it can be useful if you can't yet roll down, taking you perhaps just a fraction further than you might otherwise go without control. Or if you can roll down, then perhaps it's useful just to help you get through the sticky bit on the way up. Now, I would caution you at this point that if you can roll down and it's helping you through, what it shouldn't do is help you just lift with a straight spine. You're not Dracula coming out of the coffin. So you do want to make sure that, that tension in the band is really allowing you to slide your ribs down, your breastbone down towards the pubic bone, really soften through the back of those ribs and get that feeling of curling over more than perhaps you ordinarily would. Okay, so that's how you might use the band. And to be honest, it's pretty similar with the weights. It's pretty similar with the weights. <clears throat> you would hold your weights forward, so be careful if they're heavy, okay? And you would keep the arms reaching forward to again just control the descent. 
Now, with weights, I would perhaps suggest that you maybe only took the weights above the head, um, unless you're strong enough to take the weights back, but I would generally only really need to go above the head here. Take the arms forward and again, let the weight in your hands curl you over, controlling that movement until you come all the way back up again. So that, so the weights are pretty similar to the band, um, but I would just be careful how far you take the range of movement. So there's a couple of little options there for you if you can roll down but struggle yet to roll back up again, or even if you're only really still working on the roll down those bits can still be very useful. Please don't be tempted to anchor your feet underneath your husband, the dog, a bookcase. Okay, that's not what we're looking for. Key points, keep a smooth breath. Maintain that abdominal control, that pelvic floor lift as well. Smoothness, control, we're looking for those all the time. And if you're not yet rolling down, don't bother with the roll up. See how you get on with those. Let me know, and let me know if there's a particular movement that you're struggling with, that you'd like a little bit of help with, and I'll do another one of these for you. Hope that's been useful. I'll speak to you soon. Take care.